All right, in this video, we are going to recreate. In this video, we are going to start to recreate the classic Pong video game in processing P5, a JavaScript-based programming language. So we've already made a new sketch on openprocessing.org. And the first thing we're going to do is just a little bit of housekeeping. So I'm going to actually enter my function setup down a little bit. And we're going to make a new comment up here called global for our variable definitions. We're going to comment our two close brackets we have so we don't lose them. So we're going to say close setup. I also like to enter them down a little bit just to open the setup function a bit. And then we're going to enter this one and call it close draw. And now we don't need some of these things. Okay, so we have kind of our default program here. Uh, we're going to change our screen size. So we're going to make the screen size 900 by 500. And I'm going to move the background from setup into draw and set the background to black. And we actually don't need this ellipse. So all we've done is we've kind of cleaned up our program here and we've set our screen size and changed our background to be black. All right, now, the next thing we're gonna do is let's actually draw our ball. And our ball on the classic pond is actually a box, okay? So we're gonna be calling it ball, but we're actually gonna be drawing a rectangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some variables for our ball, okay? So we're gonna make a variable called ball x, variable called ball y, all right, another variable called ball width and ball height. And we can actually set width and height up here in global. So I'm going to set the width to be 15 and the height to be 15 as well. In setup, we're going to have to set our initial ball position. So we're going to say that rect mode is, is center. So this changes the origin of our rectangles to be the center of the rectangle rather than the corner, which makes our collisions much easier down the road. We're going to say that ball x is equal to uh, width divided by 2. And ball y is equal to height divided by 2. Now what that's doing is it's finding half of our width our canvas width and half of our canvas height uh, and putting the ball there. And then the last thing we need to do to actually see our ball is draw it on the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our colors. We're gonna say fill 255, so that's gonna be white. We're gonna say no stroke, which is gonna turn off our outline border. And then let's actually go ahead and draw our ball. So we're gonna say rect ball x, ball y, ball width, and ball height, like so. And obviously keep track of your punctuation. So I did capital X, capital Y, capital W, capital H up here in global. I need to stick with that throughout my program or else I have a bunch of undefined errors. If we push play, we see our ball right here in the middle of our screen, little white rectangle, a little white square. Now let's actually make our paddles. So we're gonna draw our paddles here. That's gonna be just another set of variables. So let's make a set of variables for player one. All right, so I'm gonna make a variable called uh, p1x, thing like 10, 10 pixels. Make a variable called p1y, which is going to be half of our height, so that's 250. And then let's make a set for player two. We're gonna put this guy on the right-hand side of the screen. So that's gonna be something like uh, 890. So P1, or sorry, P2X is equal to 890, var P2Y is equal to 10. So what I'm doing here is I'm going 10 pixels off the right edge, which would be zero plus 10, 
10 pixels off the left edge, which would be, I'm sorry, the right edge would be 900 minus 10, the left edge would be zero plus 10. And then 250 uh, is our center. So Y's are both 250 because it's half of 500. And then I'm just gonna do another set for player size, uh, which we're gonna share. So player width is going to be 20 and player height is going to be 100. And we're gonna share those between our players. So that's why I didn't do P1 width, P1 height. They're gonna be the same size. All right, so we have our variables, let's draw them. So we're gonna make a new section in draw called draw players. And we're gonna make two more rectangles. The first is gonna be rect P1X, P1Y, player width, player height. That's gonna be P1. And the second's going to be P2x, P2y, player width, player height. And that'll be our P2. So if we push play, we should see our center and our two rectangles on the side. Now, remember that uh, we drew our, our screen to be 900 by 500. So depending on how big your monitor is, how many pixels there are, that's gonna take up a different percentage of your screen. If you want like an outer boundary, let's actually add that. So right below our background, let's actually say uh, no fill and stroke set to be white. And let's draw a rectangle that's width divided by two, height divided by two, width and height. So this should give us an outer border. Let's push play. So now we have a nice little outer border of our court. While we're here, let's actually give ourselves a center line. So let's say line uh, 250 zero comma height zero. I'm sorry, 250 height. So this should be our center line. Oops, what did I do here? Uh, not 250, 450, half of 900, 450. There we go, center line. So now we have our court set up. If you haven't already, now is a good time to push save. So I'm gonna call this Pong sample. And let's actually go ahead and make our paddles move. So we're gonna use different keys for the paddles to move. So we're gonna use W and S to make player one move up and down, and the up and down arrow keys to make player two move up and down. And in a later video, we'll see how to actually set this to be uh, versus the CPU. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new function. Find your close draw, and we're gonna enter down and actually make a function called key tight. I always like to close my functions right when I make them. And we're gonna make an if statement. We're gonna say if key equals equals w in single quotations like this and end key is pressed, which means that we're currently pressing the key. Well, then we want player one to move up. So P1Y is going to equal P1Y minus player speed or P speed, which I don't think we made yet. So we're gonna make a speed for our players as well. Let's close W and we're gonna make a second one here called if key equals equals S and, and key is pressed p one y equals p1y plus p speed close s now i'm pretty sure we didn't make p speed so let's scroll up to global uh, we did not so underneath our player size i'm going to make a variable called p speed and set that equal to five so that's just going to be the speed that a player moves let's push play and if i tap my w and s keys I can move my player up and down, but I actually wanna be able to hold, push and hold my key. So we're gonna loop our function withdraw. So we have our key typed function 
we're actually going to call this in draw. So I'm going to go to the very top of my draw and make a new little comment here called call functions. And we're going to type key typed. Loop key typed function. Okay. And I'm just going to set another comment here. Appearance of court. All right. If I push play now, I should be able to push and hold S to move my player at the speed. So if five was a bigger number, or if we use 10 for the speed, we'd be able to move quicker. If I use one, we'd move slower. Now for the arrow keys for player two, we actually can't use key type. So key type is only for alphanumeric. So our letters and our numbers. We're gonna use a different function called key pressed, which is for our coded keys which are our arrow keys, our function keys, shift, things like that. And it's gonna look very similar. So in key press, we're gonna make an if statement called if key code, capital C, equals equals up underscore arrow. And, and key is pressed. Okay, so just a little different. Instead of saying key, we say key code. Instead of using single quotations, we just go all caps. Key is pressed is exactly the same. Well, if we press up, we want P2Y to move up. So P2Y equals P2Y minus P speed. Close up. And one more if statement called if key code equals equals down underscore arrow and, and key is pressed. P2Y equals P2Y plus P speed. So very similar to our key typed functions, but just a little different. Close down. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call this key press function in draw, just like we called key typed. Just say key pressed loop function. And now I should be able to press and hold my up and down arrow keys to move player two up and down, player one up and down. In the next part, we're going to make the ball move and bounce.